Hey guys, welcome to Rugged Outdoors Guide. I'm Pete and today we're gonna to be talking about something that might not be so obvious for everybody, but I think it's super important. And that is not how to pack for your trip. That's gonna be another video. But this one is what packs to buy if you don't already have your own packs and what packs I use on my solo and tandem trips, right? Super helpful to know if you're looking to buy packs because you don't know what to put or how much what will hold, right? So I will help you. Been doing this for a long time and here's what I use. Now, just before I get into that, here, I, I'm not by a lake, you can tell, right? I'm, I'm on my front lawn. There's grass everywhere. It's just easier to do. And it's kind of ugly on the lake right now. It's, it's uh, springtime in Ontario and it's kind of bleak looking still. Everything's brown. So green grass is nice. So here we go. I'm gonna show you which packs I use, how I pack them, and why I do what I do. And I hope that will help you because it, it would really help me if I didn't know this already, all right? So the first thing is, this is actually a, a long canoe. It's a 17 foot long solo canoe. It's a Bell Magic Blacklight canoe. The, the black light just means it's a mixture of Kevlar and uh, carbon. So, um, but it, it, while it's very long, it's very narrow. And uh, that can be problematic for gear, right? So here's what I use and here's why it works. The first thing, probably the most important thing, I would strongly suggest you get a dry bag, all right? This is a 110 liter. Um, I would say get as big as you can afford. This one's from Seal Line, probably the best company uh, that you can uh, get a dry bag from. And the reason I say the biggest possible is obviously you can make it smaller. That's what dry bags do, right? You, you fold them up and then squish them down. Can't make it any bigger, right? So get the biggest one you can afford. And this one is good enough easily for me for a week uh, and all my, pretty much all my stuff. But it also works for two people for about the same amount of time. Uh, if you're just judicious about what you pack. We're talking all your uh, um, uh, clothing and sleeping bags and tents and uh, mattresses and tarps, all that kind of stuff, right? It all goes in here, kind of the softer stuff, right? And so, Here's where it goes. I'll just show you real quick. This is, this is. I'm standing at the, the back of the canoe, the stern, and that's that's where it fits. As big as it is, it, it just fits in there. You got to tuck everything in, all the straps and everything. So that's kind of where it goes. Now, the other thing is my yoke. Uh, obviously, it's uh, connected when I'm carrying the canoe, but when it's when I'm uh, on the water, it goes on the way at the back, at the very, very back, a stern, all right? And now let's head to the front into the bow of the canoe. I have this, this is a uh, medium sized food barrel. It's not a bear proof barrel or anything like that. It's a, it's a pretty inexpensive one. And uh, very important that it has a harness, right? Because all this stuff is gonna be on your back at some point. So in here, I'm not gonna go into all details, but just you know, so you know, this has got all my food for a week and it still has room for my stove and like a mess kit, all the, the pots and pans and detergent. Um, uh, it's got a couple of extra utensils, knives, that kind of thing. Um, and there's still room left over. So it holds a whole lot of stuff. Uh, this is perfectly fine for two people for probably five days ish. So that goes right in the bow. Got to slide it up a little bit. And so now there's, there's a whole lot of room left for me and my legs. So the next thing is super important. This got to have my fishing gear. Now this is a super small uh, tackle box, right? This can, if I had a pocket big enough, it almost fit in a pocket. Depending on where I'm going and what my priorities are, I will have either a bigger or smaller tackle box. So this is one of the smaller ones. And then I just bring one rod. And of course, the, the rod will sit right here in the front and the, the tackle box will go right underneath my seat. Now, as you can see, we've got a seal line map case, which just gets strapped to a thwart, the thwart right in front of me. Um, with a couple of Velcro straps. I just seem to not have them at the moment, but that's okay. Easy to get. You just strap those on and there it is. And you can kind of flip it up and over the, you know, the thwart to get it out of the way. Um, so 
anyway, that's where that goes. And then there's only two other things. The only other pack that I use is usually this thing here. This is just a glorified fanny pack, really, is all it is. It's water resistant. The other two packs that I showed you, the, the, the dry bag and the food barrel, they are waterproof. So uh, in here, I just have things like my car keys and I have a little bit of extra photo gear, my snacks for the day. I'm not gonna get to my, you know, open my food barrel while I'm on the water. So very handy to have this, but of course, when I'm, when I'm portaging, it's attached to my body. So it really is not significant in terms of uh, gear, uh, the, the, in terms of the volume. So that goes right underneath my seat as well. And the only other things I'll say, if I need more gear, I have a 10 liter dry bag as well. And uh, with, with a carabiner, I just attach this, this onto my seal line um, dry bag, right? So it, it, it doesn't make much difference in terms of weight and volume or anything like that. So again, it's just, I consider it an attachment or a, just an extension of the dry bag if I need it, okay? So the other, the only other last thing I have that I bring with me obviously is, well, of course my life jacket, I'm usually wearing it, right? So um, I don't consider it as something I'm packing. It's just always on my body, even when I'm portaging. And then of course I have my <sighs> custom made, handcrafted bench shaft pedal, um, <laughs> obviously that. And then the only other thing that I, well, I should probably mention this even though I'm not getting into gear, but inside my dry bag, I have my, um, my backup paddle. It's my little emergency paddle. You can buy these little things at, uh, you know, just even at Walmart, I think you probably get them, or certainly on Amazon, those little orange extendable paddles. I've never had to use one. I've only I always used the, the main paddle I bring in. It's never broken. So thankfully, uh, it's been good. So now guys, what I'm gonna do is tell you why I do this setup. Not only does it, it fit nice and neatly in my canoe with even a little bit of extra area left over, but it's really, really important to understand that I do what I do with these packs and just, just, and just use what I told you because of the portage. Every trip I go on, there's a portage and um, this is what fits best. So here's how it works. When I get to a portage, obviously everything comes out, right? So here, I'll do a really quick version of everything out. Onto the ground. Okay, so here's how it works. I'm just going to explain this to you, um, but you'll you'll see what I mean. The first thing I do is I will bring my my canoe. Uh, that it, whatever it varies, but usually that's the case. And so for me, what works perfectly is to carry the food barrel and the canoe itself. That's it, All right? Because I need my arms to kind of steady the canoe and the food barrel doesn't stick up too high. Um, anyway, that works perfectly. So now if I take the yoke and the food barrel away, and this is my sometimes bag. So we'll move that away. So what am I left with? All that is left is my dry bag and everything in this little pile here which is extremely, extremely easy to carry in your hands. Okay, this, this is usually attached to something, so I don't even really care. It's usually attached to the canoe. So, so this thing will be around my waist. So no hands involved with that. And sometimes I even have room to put my little tackle box in. But even if I don't, this is the deal. This with my dry bag. That's it. And neither of those two trips that I just told you uh, that I take are particularly taxing. The canoe is only 29 pounds. So that's it guys, that is all I do. I carry this stuff in my hands and I have three packs that I, I, I carry on my body and uh, a total of two trips. Hey guys, thanks for watching again this week's episode of Rugged Outdoors Guide. And you know what, please do give me your like and subscribe while you're down there giving me your comments on how 
you can maybe do a better job or if this has helped you. I'd love to know, love to hear encouragement from you. And until the next time, guys, please get out there, enjoy God's creation, and keep on looking up. <laughs> Always gets caught on stuff.